Oh, there, is there dudes right here already? Look at this guy. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Alright, Sally. What's up, agents? How y'all doing? Hope everybody's hanging in there, being as safe as you guys need to be during this holiday season. Got the uh, lovely pumpkin spice Don Francisco's coffee. Don't get it. Terrible. Terrible. But I love coffee, so I'm going to drink it. All right, guys. So I'm putting together all the information for our comprehensive healer build. But today, what I want to do is bring the new and improved Maxidizer build. So we went ahead, tweaked a few different things. We found a few different components. And we managed to squeeze a little bit more damage out of a solo Maxidizer build. Want to show you guys how we're going to do that. Also, I have a couple different variations that you guys can use. Um, not all builds are created equal, and we definitely have some definitive winners. So I just want to go over the basics of the build, and then we'll go over the different combinations, and I will hopefully, if I remember, explain the reasons why one combination would be superior to another. All right. Uh, do me a favor. If you guys learn anything new, you find this entertaining, uh, hitting that like button would be appreciated. Hopefully, by the end of this, I will have earned your guys' subscription. Best thing you can do to help my channel is to share this video. Uh, if you guys feel like I missed anything, you guys would do anything different, or you guys want to see something else in the future, leave a comment down below. All right, agents, let's get into the Maxidizer build. All right, agents, so first of all, we'll talk about the specializations. We're going to use the Technician. This is going to give us the Amped. It's going to give us the Faraday field. It will give us the Overclock CPU. We'll get the Link Laser Pointer. We'll get the dismantling for a little bit of additional damage to some units. Most importantly in this, we're going to get the Artificer Hive. Alright guys, first thing we'll do is we'll talk about gear and brand sets. We are only going to be going with brand sets. We're going to try to squeeze in one piece of Wyvern where we can for the 10% skill damage. We're going to go with three pieces of Empress International. And we're not worried about the skill health, but we do care about the skill damage and more importantly, the skill efficiency. After that, it's really what you want to do for those second two pieces. Uh, we're going to be using some name pieces. Uh, we can use some exotics. So it's really up to you. But the two main brand sets, the one Wyvern and the three Empress. Of note, of course, Murakami is good. That 20% skill damage will keep your cloud around significantly longer. Now let's talk about some name gear that you can use. One of the things and where we're gonna get the most damage is by using the Sacrifice name chest piece, which comes with the perfect glass cannon. Another name piece you can use for your Wyvern slot would be the Claws Out Holster, which will give you that extra 500% melee damage and the extra 9% pistol damage. Another option that you have that's pretty cool is the chill out mask. If you roll it with skill damage, so you can roll skill tier, you can then use two skill duration mods, and this can be of great benefit as well. So with the name gear, the chill out mask, you can get one extra mod slot than you would normally get, plus the 5% armor from the Gila. You get that 500% melee damage, some extra pistol damage, and with the perfect glass cannon you get the highest damage bonus of anything in the game now for the chest you'll either use glass cannon or preferably perfect glass cannon for the backpack you can use tech support or combined arms whichever one you prefer whichever fits your play style better now to quickly note the two exotics that can be swapped into this build and really add to the build first one is the waveform this is cool but of course the most substantial piece that you could add to this build would be the Memento Backpack. And ultimately, when you have M30 stacks and that short-term buff going, that will lead to the most damage and the longest cloud duration that you can get. Uh, you just got to figure out how you want to build up your build if you're going to use the Memento. Now, as far as the mod slots, you're going to either have three or four, depending on if you're using the Chill Out Mask. You use skill duration in all of those slots. As far as the attributes go, you're gonna want skill damage in every minor attribute slot. And where you have a second choice, you either wanna go with skill haste or you can go with armor per second if you're planning on using this build for legendary. 
having a little bit of recovery very well could be a good thing. All right, agents, as far as the weapons go, in actual gameplay, you're going to want to use the capacitor pretty much as your primary weapon. So give you the most amount of weapon damage as well as buffing your skill damage as you run and gun. Simply put, in every situation, the capacitor will be the best weapon. We're just not using it for the damage testing because, as you guys can see, it takes so long to stack it up. But in actual gameplay, you're going to be running around and you're going to have most of your stacks most of the time while you're engaged in battle. So for all damage testing, we're simply using the LMG and these other weapons because it's easier to test and the ramp up time is significantly faster. But use the capacitor in real gameplay. To make it easy testing for the range, we went with two different choices, and these are what I'd recommend would be to use the test subject, but as the damage testing will show, and we will get into this, but I'll just tell you right now, when I compare the damage testing of perfect in sync with the test subject versus my 249 machine gun with both damage to armor and damage to targets out of cover um, with the standard per uh, version of in sync, we still out damage the test subject and it allows me to use the link laser pointer, which the test subject won't do. If you want to use the Harmony, you can do that as well, but still you have the same problem where you cannot get damage to armor and damage to targets out of cover on the Harmony. So an LMG, even, an, well, an LMG or a shotgun is really where you're gonna get your maximum damage because you can have both damage to targets out of cover and damage to armor, which is what you want to maximize your damage. Uh, one other secondary weapon to consider would be the mop because then you have that plus 10% armor on kill and what you can do is if you notice that an enemy is about to die in the cloud you can quickly swap to the mop the enemy dies swap back over to your primary weapon the capacitor or the LMG and that way you can take advantage of the mop uh, the one other thing we'll note is for the sidearm, either use Future Perfect on a sidearm if you want to have an extra overcharge. Otherwise, go with Sledgehammer so that you can provide that damage buff for yourself and your team if you're running in a team. Now, as far as the skills, we are, of course, going to be using the Oxidizer. And what we are really aiming for the sweetest spot if you guys have it set up perfectly and one of our builds does this you can end up with a 20.8 second duration of your cloud and exactly a 20.8 second cooldown so theoretically with one specific build you can always have a cloud out now i prefer for a little less cloud duration but more damage because i want to provide the maximum amount of damage, uh, essentially burst damage. I want the most damage in the shortest amount of time. And so we're still gonna cover the few different variations. There's basically three top end versions that work uh, in these different ways. So the real thing is how do we maximize that damage of any of these builds? And that's by using our second skill. We're gonna be using the Artificer Hive. And this of course is great because it'll buff our damage and the duration of your cloud by just a little bit. And if you're in a team, you can drop it on the ground and you will be buffing everybody in your team. So this does contribute very well to a properly built team. Um, as you guys will see at the very end of this, I do a little bit of gameplay going out to fight the uh, name guy that's always right outside of the White House. And it's a little tricky to do this build by yourself just because that perfect glass cannon, you're taking 60, percent bonus damage from everything and, and your liability by yourself but it's still doable you guys will see we'll get through it there's basically three different versions of this that we're looking at now our primary variation of this that we were using we got the chill out mask we have an empress international with glass cannon chest piece we got the claws out we have an empress backpack we have Empress Gloves, and we are running the Mirakami. Now this variation of the build, when built properly, gives us our 20.8 cooldown. It also gives us our 20.8 cloud duration. However, we're gonna go for a little more max damage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out. We're gonna toss in the Sacrifice chest piece, 
So the real question comes down, what do you do with the mask and the knees? And you have to choose, do you want the chill out mask and some Empress International knees? Or do you want to use the Emperor's Guard Murakami in the knees and use an Empress International mask? And the only difference, if this is all maxed out, is will you have the 5% Gila if you use the chill out mask, the 5% armor, or will you have the 20% skill duration from the Emperor's Guard and get the 1% armor regen per second? Overall, I gotta be honest guys, I think we're better off going with the Emperor's Guard. It's more a question of, do you have the Emperor's Guard? Do you have the chill out mask? All right guys, before we go to the damage range, just to show you guys what this is capable of, I just wanna go over what I think the very best build would be that I'm not able to test in the range because we cannot stack up the momentum. But if you were to go with a Memento backpack, you go with the perfect glass cannon sacrifice chest piece. You go with the Wyvern claws out and then you go with the mask, the gloves, and the knees, the Empress International. I think overall this will be the best build for you. The only downside of this build is you do not have a lot of survivability in the beginning while you're racking up your kills confirmed. But by the time you get to about 20 stacks of kills confirmed, you'll have substantial recovery, you'll have substantial weapon damage, and your uh, cloud damage and duration should be on par with just about the best of these builds. So that's what I would do if you want to use the Memento and you're gonna be playing in a group or solo and you have time to get those kills confirmed. Unfortunately, we were not able to test those damage numbers. Do us a favor, if any of you guys check this out, let us know in the comment section what numbers you're getting out. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. That is the Maxidizer build in a nutshell. Let's see, did I forget anything? All right, agents, now I'm just going to let the range play out, and you guys will see we can damn near hit 700,000 damage per tick. And I'm really glad that I revisited this. Uh, you guys stay tuned. It's going to take a little bit of work, but I'm going to be putting together this comprehensive healer build. If you guys have anything else that you guys want to see in the near future or the beginning of this next year, you know, whatever, let me know. Hey, thank you so much for checking this out, agents. Do me a favor. On the way out of here, smash that like button for me. Hopefully, I have earned your guys subscription by now best thing you can do to help the channel is share the video you agents be as safe as you need to be out there and i will catch y'all in the dark side happy holidays agents peace out this version of the chill out mask the emperor's guard knee pads the claws out holster and the standard glass cannon with three-piece empress We're now losing the Emperor's Guard and gaining the Sacrifice chest piece with the perfect glass cannon.
we're now using the Sacrifice, Emperor's Guard, Claws Out, and three pieces of Empress International. The only way I can imagine out damaging this is Memento at M30 with the short term buff or taking on outside buffs from teammates. Hey agents, so I'm putting this in as an edit at the end. One thing I wanted to confirm that technically the second most damage that you can get is use Wyvern, Three Piece Empress International, and the Hana Yu utilizing the combined arms. You'll just beat out every version of this except for, and this is the big one, this version we're talking about with the Memento you ultimately will end up with 20% more uh, skill damage when the memento is totally stacked up and you have that short-term buff going. So when you don't have that short-term buff stacked up, you do lose a bit of skill damage. But the thing about the Hana Yu and using that is you lose out on the possible utility of the claws out. You lose out on the extra damage of the sacrifice you lose out on the chance to get the extra duration from either the chill out mask or from the Emperor's Guard uh, Mirakami, which will also give you the armor regen. And you lose out on all the benefits you get from the memento. I just felt like I owed it to you guys to put that in there. If all you care about is big damage numbers at the range, one Wyvern, two Hana Yu with the combined arms, perfect combined arms. Three piece Empress International with glass cannon. Fine, you got it. Alright. Alright, agents. Hey, thank you so much for checking this out, agents. Do me a favor, on the way out of here, smash that like button for me. Hopefully I have earned your guys' subscription by now. That's what you can do to help the channel share the video. You agents, be as safe as you need to be out there, and I will catch you all in the dark side. Happy holidays, agents. Peace out.